that had a tragic ending. Diana's heartfelt revelation. I was quite happy to give all this up, blah, 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 just to go off and live with it. I couldn't really believe it. <laughs> but in the end, she says, she got burned. How? When Diana Revealed continues. 28 minutes into this first interview session with Peter Sedlin in the fall of 1992, Diana took the conversation in a new direction. The topic was breathtaking. When you consider Diana was both a married woman and a princess speaking indiscreetly inside her palace walls. I tell you one of the biggest crutches in my life, which I, I don't find it easy to discuss, was when I was 24, 25, I felt deeply in love with somebody who worked in this environment. And he was the greatest friend I've ever had. She was quite honest, it seemed, with you about her feelings for someone who worked inside the palace. Yeah. She needed somebody who would, who would let her be herself, who would look out for her. Diana didn't tell Settlin the man's name, but she was talking about her bodyguard, Barry Manicky. In 1985, seven years before she sat down with Peter Settlin, her four-year marriage to Prince Charles had all but broken down. She suspected her husband was secretly seeing Camilla Parker Bowles, and Diana, then 24, had begun to show interest in the 38-year-old Manicky. I was walking around trying to see him. Um, I just, you know, all my heart and my sleep was only happy when he was around. And then... So you had an, an intimacy, yeah. which you weren't getting. Yeah. Settlin asked Diana whether she thought of the bodyguard as a kind of father figure. Yeah, I suppose you could say I did, yes. I'm sure I did. I was like a little girl in front of him the whole time. Desperate for praise. Diana confided to Settlin that as she became closer to Manneke, she even half-joked about running away with him. I mean, I was quite happy to give all this up, blah, 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 all this. At the moment, at the time, it was quite something to have all this, um, just to go off and live with him. I couldn't really believe it. Well, everyone can. It's and he not... kept saying he thought it was a good idea, too. So... Were these idle fantasies or signs of much deeper, more intense feelings that then became physical? There was not a romantic relationship? There may or may not have been, but that's not what she said. And in many ways, I don't need to know. It wasn't the most interesting thing about her, her sex life, I'm afraid. Whatever the nature of Diana's relationship with Barry Manneke, newspapers have reported it was a full-blown love affair, though Manneke's wife says there is no proof, Gossip about the Princess of Wales and her bodyguards spread through the royal household like wildfire. They all got so difficult, and people got so jealous and bitchy in this house, and eventually he had to go. And um, he was, it was all found out, and he was chucked out. It wasn't clear to Diana what her husband knew about her relationship with her bodyguard. But after Manneke was moved from protecting Diana and dismissed from royal service a few months later, Diana got the shock of her life. While she was riding in a limousine with Charles on the way to a premiere at the 1987 Cannes Film Festival, he turned to her to tell her about an incident the previous night involving Barry Manneke. Charles was casual, but to Diana, the news was an unbelievable bombshell. And Charles said to me she was killed in a motorbike accident, and that was the biggest blow in my life, I must say. That was a real killer. Diana said revealing the news in such a casual way on such a formal occasion was a particularly cruel and callous move by her husband. And Charles thought he knew, but he never, never met any proof. And he just jumped it on me like that. And I wasn't able to do anything. Crushed as she was, Diana still had to put on her happy royal face for the cameras at Cannes. I just sat there all day going through this huge high-profile visit to Cannes. Thousands of press. Just devastated. Just devastated. You know, I wasn't supposed to mind as much as I did, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but then when I got out of the car, you no. showed that on that night in question, when you look at the pictures of Diana at Cannes, she looked as though she didn't have a care in the world. She was radiant, she was all smiles, and this, I think, is one of those central moments in Diana's life. She finds out that the man that she's infatuated with at that time 
is di uh, has died, and yet she's over uh, able to project this, this fairy tale image of the, the glamorous princess. Diana said her devastating emotional pain over the loss was soon followed by suspicion. And then she said something even more extraordinary. I think he was bumped off. But um, there we are, I don't, I'll never know. She did say something that you didn't follow up on, and mm. I'm wondering why you didn't. Mm. She said that she thought that Barry Manicky was bumped off. Mm -hmm. I didn't get the, the feeling that she fundamentally believed that he'd, he'd been um, bumped off. She had a doubt. She wished that people would talk about it. It was more about somebody close to her being taken away. But Diana apparently couldn't shake off the nagging doubt, even though she'd already been told her suspicion was probably unfounded. The year before she sat down with Peter Sedlin, Diana had asked Andrew Morton to investigate Manneke's death. She always felt that some unseen forces had engineered that death. As it happened, a journalist friend of Morton's had reported on the accident and had been at the scene. And he was able to confirm that it was an accident. A relatively inexperienced driver just passed their driving test uh, who had made a mistake and that Manneke had been killed in this very tragic accident. And I told Diana that. And whilst the logic of it was there and whilst the evidence was there, um, she never really believed that. Now that this interview with Sedlin has been released, Diana's suspicions are being taken quite seriously. As part of an ongoing inquiry into the cause of Diana's death, police are today reinvestigating the circumstances surrounding the accident that killed Barry Manneke. Whatever happened to him, it was clear from Diana's interview with Peter Sedlin that Manneke haunted her long after his death. She even went to clairvoyance to try to contact his spirit. I used to have really disturbing dreams about him. He was very unhappy uh, wherever he's gone to. And so I went and laid some, I went and found out where he was buried and went to put some um, flowers on his grave. Arriving at the cemetery, Diana discovered she was in the right place, but there was no tombstone. Manneke's body had been cremated there, his ashes scattered. He just chucked over the ground. So she laid the flowers anyway. And the day I did that, the day the dream stopped. It's so strange, wasn't it? It's like some recognition. Diana's relationship with her bodyguard may have awakened new emotional depths within her, but it also taught her a harsh lesson. I should never have paid her for what I did, and I got very burned. But getting burned may also have made her tougher. As the conversation continued, she was about to reveal how tough she really was. A family feud boils over, and Diana lashes out with all her fury. But can the princess channel her anger into action? When Diana Revealed continues. The 1987 death of Diana's bodyguard, whom she loved so deeply, left her feeling vulnerable and exposed. I was like, I'm going to function my own time. Desperate for praise. Desperate. And the comfort wouldn't come from her husband, Prince Charles, who had all but deserted her for Camilla Parker Bowles. Now, six years into their marriage, Diana yearned for intimacy. She found companionship with various lovers. And of course, she had the two boys she cherished. Still, she felt more alone than ever in her empty and sterile palace home. As Peter Settlin saw it, the emptiness she felt echoed the loneliest moments of her childhood. It was quick, really quick. It was difficult. The more she spoke, the more Settlin sensed her fear of abandonment and her desperate need for her father's love. Settlin told Diana that confronting her past was the first step were becoming a self-assured and independent woman. You know, this gap between a child and an adult is tiny. We all pretend it's huge. It's tiny. As she took him through her teenage years, Diana became particularly animated when talking about Countess Rain Spencer, the stepmother she despised, the woman she thought stole her precious father away. We used to have pigeons to him, lovely house, everything else. She moved in. 
about. After Rain moved in, Diana's older sisters moved away, leaving 13-year-old Diana and her younger brother Charles